and I have to quickly win a friend. And it's tough because I'm coming in to put my hands on them. <laughs> and this is my point, right, Sebastian? Are you feeling the same way about this? You know? Right. This is Dr. Doug Willen. Thanks for joining us today. Today I'm at Rising Star Horse Rescue in Connecticut. It's about an hour from where I live. This is my third time here and today I'm back. I'm going to see a few horses today that you'll get to see in coming weeks as separate videos. Rising Star currently has somewhere between 25 and 30 horses and some of them they adopt out. Some get to live their lives here for the rest of their lives. They have both surrender and rescue horses here. They also do riding lessons for children and adults and they have a great volunteer program. So if you are interested in donating to them or getting any of their merchandise, their URL or web link is in the description box below. So check it out. Uh, it's just a beautiful place and I'm glad to be here volunteering again. So we have Sebastian here today. We're at Rising Star Horse Rescue in Connecticut and Sebastian was recently surrendered um, and uh, let's see he's Welsh. Mm. Uh, he's Welsh breed. Um, really pretty right? I mean look at look at this beautiful handsome Welsh horse who's pooping right now. You're so excited to be on camera that that's what happens. Um, so we're going to start checking them. We're going to look at some different things. You know, uh, let's walk away now to get a reset and then let him square up a little bit and let me see what he looks like, okay? He has cute little hoofs, doesn't he? <laughs> a little dainty in the feet. He is a little narrow front, narrow base. I don't know if that's his normal position of rest because I haven't got to see him move around and stop, move around and stop. But the way he chose to stop right now is a little narrow, and I'm curious why. He's checking me out. Do you think I can work with you today, Sebastian? Would that be okay? He's breathing, he's a little stressed, he doesn't know who I am. You know, it's one of the things, like a lot of people that watch this, if you're a horse person, you're used to seeing your same horse year after year, day after day, they're used to, uh, they're used to working with you. They're used to having you come in and feed them and scratch them and be with them in their lives and have a relationship. And then I show up to a horse uh, that also might have just been transplanted, right? This horse was just surrendered. I don't know the history. And I have to quickly win a friend. And it's tough because I'm coming in to put my hands on them. <laughs> and this is my point, right, Sebastian? Are you feeling the same way about this? You know? Right. So we have to be careful. We have to be respectful. We have to be gentle and relaxed. And respectful is a good word, I think, right? All right. And we'll see what we can get done today. You know, I'm going to start coming back more regularly. So part of that is that you don't have to do everything in one day. This is a process, not a one day procedure. And whether it's equine massage, or if it's equine chiropractic or equine acupuncture or any type of body work, um, you know, the re repetition is much more important than trying to do everything all at once and forcing something to happen uh, when it's not the right mood. So I'm just, again, I know I'm chatting for a second, but I'm giving Sebastian just a second to express himself. We heard him express himself and I'm coming down and letting him feel my touch. I'm not squared up facing him. I'm purposely just doing a little bit. I'm even leaning away a little bit, creating a softness on this side and not confronting with my body language and giving him just a chance to feel what, I, what I'm doing. And he's definitely watching me. Remember, horses are prey animals um, and we you know, we condition them not to run away, right? But they're just thinking about running away instinctually. And imagine if you approached a deer 
A deer's gonna just run. You can't even get close to a deer. Um, and that's a prey animal. But that's the instinct that isn't domesticated, right? That flight or, fi uh, flight or, flight or fight or fright type of instinct. But, you know, horses uh, live with us and they get used to us and so they don't run away so fast. But they're definitely prey animals and they're checking everything out. And one of the reasons why I do like to adjust the neck is because we want 360 degree rotation. Because if a horse can't turn all the way this way and all the way this way to check out its environment, then it gets stressed because a prey animal needs to have that panoramic view whenever possible. So I'm gonna start checking you now. May I start to look at you, Sebastian? Hey, this is Dr. Doug Willen. This is my Collagen for Horses product. It's 100% collagen. It's American made. You put a little bit in the horse's food every day and you're gonna see a difference in the coat, in the teeth, the hoofs, the connective tissue, muscle ligaments. It's good for that older achy horse, but it's also good for a developing horse that's growing into its adult body. Give it a try. Okay. And he's still a little up. Do you see how his head's up a little bit? So I'm going to ask him to bring his head down just a little bit and see if I can get him to just relax a little bit. And again, I'm doing a little bit more before I get started because he's a little anxious. I'm getting him just to... I'm tugging the littlest bit down asking him to soften his top line. I'm going to take a breath in. Taking a breath in. There's a spot here, right at C3. I'm gonna hold it with my thumb. And this is more of a massage, just light touch, very light touch. Soft touch with my thumb, but I'm in a really good spot. And he's pulling away a little bit, but also enjoying it. He's thinking about it. He's leaning in as opposed to pulling away. I'm just going to take my time. I'm still on that muscle. I feel like it softens a little under my thumb pressure. I'm not putting a lot of pressure. I'm keeping my finger really light so if he pulls away, it won't grab my hand. But I also want to tug him laterally towards him, just towards me just a little bit. Just a little bit. I'm going to let go in just a second because it's just about released. And... Let's see what he does. Let's see if he takes that in a little bit. I'm watching the set of his ears, his nostrils, his top line. He's, he's relaxing a little bit. Is he relaxed a lot? No, he's not but we, we're making a little bit of progress. Okay, let's keep going, okay, Sebastian? Oh, first I wanna check that spot again. It's much better. Checking down the cervicals, let's check up at the pole. Pole feels pretty good. It's a little tension on the right. Let me feel the spacing between the atlas and the angle of the ramus. And I'm going to come around here if I can, once he turns towards me again and feel the left side. And the left side's a little closed down, so I am going to adjust that. I'm going to switch sides with Sam. And this one might make him get a little jumpy because this is a very sensitive area. But I'm going to try to do it soft. Bring his head down a little bit. Got it. You could hear that click a little bit too. So let him, let him take that in. That's gonna take a second. 
But there's your licking a little bit. I, I got it. He had a left superior atlas. Let's just give him a second. Sam. I got it. That's the spot. Let's come down the back. Here's Withers T3 through T8. I'm feeling wiggling the spinuses, feeling the muscles that run along the back. This, there's on either side, there's three groups. The most medial is spinalis, longissimus, iliocostalis is the third from medial to lateral. And I come down and put a little pressure in there, feeling those coming down. And here's a little spot here. Feeling the ribs, right in here in the rectus abdominis, underneath, iliopsoas, pec, feeling the leg. Can I have your leg? Can I have your leg? Hmm? May I have this? Thank you. Come back around this way. I just want to take a quick peek at his hoof. Um, like I said, I'm going to come back. There's no reason for me to make him more anxious than I need to. I wasn't necessarily curious about adjusting his front limb as much as I just wanted to get it just a quick snapshot view of the health of the hoof. So. What I did see, I scraped real quick, I have my, my pick with me, um, that the sole was strong and uniform. Um, the frog was really healthy. The sulcus wasn't soft. The heels were nicely trimmed. Uh, the horse is in really good sound hoofs. Now I could check all four, but if one was bad, then I'd want to look at all the others. Um, today I'm not going to go further than that on the hoofs. I was, I was just curious. Sometimes because the hoofs are a living thing and they support the weight of the horse and they're constantly growing. So they give us clues of how the horse's front limbs are or rear, rear end is if there's something unhealthy there or something uneven. But for the most part, if you look at his hoofs, they're not run under. Um, they're not forward displaced. Uh, the hairline are uniform. 
the shape are nice. It's not like the left one is displayed or flattened and the top one and then the right one looks like a can of soup and they're so uneven that tells us there's something off. Something off possibly in the shoulders and the neck or the rear end. So now um, there's a pressure point here I feel that I'm going to just contact for a second. I'm watching that leg. I don't really feel like getting kicked today, but I do want to hold this pressure point. So I'm going to, he's, he's holding that leg up, but I want to hold this until he puts that leg back down and squares up again. So my thumb is pushing up into the glute. I'm now moving towards pressure for the sacro tuberous ligament on the left. I might come under the tail even. And I'm holding and he's letting me do this. And he's starting to lean in a little bit. But let's see if he squares up now. I'm gonna go around the back. You don't have to follow me with the camera. But I'm looking at the, uh, the ilium can pitch forward on the left or the right. And I'm just watching him move a little bit. He doesn't like me this close to his rear end. But he's got an AS ilium on the left where the left part of the ilium sinks down. It goes anterior or ventrally. And so I'm going to set up right here. And especially if he lets me by leaning in. Hi there, buddy. Can I do this for you? He's small, so I have to get under it and go at a 45 degree angle up. Got it. You can hear that click too. Did you hear that a little bit? So let's let him integrate that for a second. Okay. Nice. And I'm coming, I'm just still curious about these mid thoracics and then the thoracolumbar junction. So here's a thoracolumbar junction and I can just wiggle this with my finger and sometimes get some reflexes of the muscles to pull for me. And I'm going to adjust that in a second. I'm going to come around though. Okay, so this is T18. So he has 18 thoracic, seven cervicals, and six lumbar. But this is the thoracolumbar junction. Um, we don't know much about his history, but that would be the rear end of the saddle. And it's spinous left. So I'm going to just do a quick adjustment because he doesn't really like me touching that spot. So I'm just going to get it done. So okay if I adjust that spot on you? What do you think? Can I get that spot? Just take a quick second. It's a little left. It's a little posterior, but mostly left is the problem that I'm thinking about. What do you think? Can I get T18 for you? It's going to feel really good, especially if you ever put a rider up there. So here it is. You ready? Here, come back this way so the camera can see you, okay? So this time, uh, Sam, I'll have you on that side just, just to give some counter um, uh, enough tension to, to keep them straightened up. And I'll be real quick. You can move in a little closer to see this with the camera. And here we go. Got it. Just kind of look back at it. The last thing I want to do is I, I, I really start now to see that he is a little narrow in the base of the front, the front base narrow. I've seen him square up a few times. The back depends. He sometimes lands here. Look at me. He sometimes lands nice and centered in the back. Sometimes he's a little sugar footed or forward on one or light on the leg, but that's the leg I adjusted, right? I did the front left ilium to level that out. The front just always, is narrow, so I want to feel the pecs, and I also want to go under the front left armpit, if I can call it. Can I call it an armpit? That's what I call it on me. But I'm under there, and I'm looking for a spasm. 
and I'm looking also at the pack. Okay, so I'm going to work under here and then I'm going to also pry it open with both hands and give it a little space. So I'm pushing into the uh, serratus part of the rib cage and I'm also pushing or abducting his upper limb to create space and I'm leaning in with my shoulder at the same time. And what's kind of cool is he's leaning back into me and I want that step and there it is. So let's let him walk around and let's see. So what I did is I got into here and I pushed it away. But already he's opening up a little bit if you see his front spacing. But we have to do the other side. So bring him around again so he's facing. You might take a big long walk and then come back and face us here, Sam. And then come back this way and square him up right into the sun. Okay, you ready for me? We want to do this side too, right? May I? So this is the leg. Now we're going to wait and watch him step away. I'm holding this pressure point under, like up in here. That's where I am. And there's a, and you can almost just, I don't know if you guys can see it, but he's twitching there when I hold this too. So I'm going to counter pull, push and pull, creating space. Let him step. That's good. I want to do one more of those. He's doing a little cross step. Hey, bud. I'm on a very tender spot here. There it goes. That's what I want. So I'm, he's really narrow. I come under the armpit. I push it away and get him to open up a little bit. I also now want to feel the pecs and see if there's any trigger points at the pec because the pecs, think of us when we bench press, the pecs definitely have a pushing motion, but they also have some adduction also. So if a horse is too narrow here, you might find a trigger point at the pec and that allow the, the limb to be more centered rather than dragging medially or inside. And I think he's got one on the right here. And I'm inside by the pec, and there it is. Can I get this one for you? How do you think about that one? Okay. Ooh, all right, that's a tender spot. I'm holding this spot. This one I am digging in a little bit, but it's a powerful muscle on a horse. And there we got a step. Okay, let's come back here and talk to me for a second. Okay, I'm gonna do one lower spot too on you. This is lower cervical at C7. And I'm gonna see if he'll let me cradle his head for a little bit. A little longer, a little longer. My fingers are under the scapula, so I'm all the way into C7. My fingers are buried underneath. A little longer, a little more. There you go, down, relax. Bring your head down, bring it down. Bring it down. Bring it down. Bring it down. And go. That's what we wanted. And look at his base. Look at that. Nice and wide now. Okay, we're going to end there, okay? Thanks for letting me work on you today. Hmm? All right, a little more. 
There you go. Down. Relax. Bring your head down. Bring it down. Bring it down. Bring it down. 